Hi, welcome to Under Our Skin Podcast. I'm here today with Holly Marie. How you doing today, Holly? Good, how are you? I'm good, thanks. How you uh how are you is you and your family holding up in this in these crazy times now? We're doing good. Uh it's pretty boring. <laughs> Not much happening, but uh my husband still works, so that's good. But uh, I've just been doing a lot of house stuff, so house is very clean right now. <laughs> The cleanest that it ever was and ever will be? Most likely. (laughs) So besides house stuff, are you doing anything else to keep yourself busy? A lot of uh, Hulu binging right now. Uh, I've been very unproductive. Um, Trying to keep up with home workouts, but it's not not really doing it for me. (laughs) Tough to get the motivation? Yeah, yeah. I've been very unmotivated lately, for sure. What kind of stuff are you binging on Hulu? Uh, right now I'm watching American Dad because that's the best show ever, <laughs> and uh, Bob's Burgers. <laughs> so how how are you feeling about not being able to tattoo for for this length of time? Is this the longest that you've gone without tattooing? Yeah, this has been the longest I think since I got into tattooing that I haven't tattooed, other than like my apprenticeship. But that I wasn't tattooing, so I didn't know what I was missing out on. Um, but yeah, definitely it's. But it's been rough not being able to, like, do what I love every day, you know what I mean? So, and, like, creatively, I haven't had any motivation because I've just been, like, sitting at home, like, kind of depressed <laughs> that I can't fucking create anything. So, I know so many people are, like, painting right now and, like, selling prints and all that kind of stuff. And I'm just, like, I have zero motivation for that whatsoever right now. I, I don't know what to do about it. Have you been keeping in touch with any... any uh any clients, any potential future tattoos to come? That kind of yeah, stuff? I still am having, uh, I shut down booking for conventions on my website because usually you can book through my website, but because of all of this and like all the dates are now like changed, which sucks because I was supposed to have like a winter off and now that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, I shut just shut down booking until everything is like set as to when these conventions are going to be rescheduled for, or if I'm canceling, if I'm going to that that convention, if it's, you know, scheduling issues or anything like that. Um, But in terms of like regular consultation or appointment booking, like with my home shop, I'm still in contact with a lot of people. And like all of my appointments from this time right now are still like kind of on hold. They're like, well, you know, just reschedule me for when you guys are planning to reopen. And I'm like, I don't really know when that's going to be. Um, the state of Connecticut was talking about as long as cases go down, May 20th being like a start to reopen date. But if cases decline, like if they don't decline or if they go up for any reason, then that's going to get pushed back even more. So I'm like tentatively booking, rescheduling people for after that. But I'm like, it could get rescheduled again. Who knows? For sure. Yeah. The future, the future is so unknown at this point. And it sucks to try and like schedule things with people like consultations or appointments or whatever. Like I've been doing a lot of uh, like email consultations and things like that because like, I just can't go to the shop right now. So um, to try and book people, it's like, it sucks. Cause it's like, they're like, well, when do you think you'll reopen? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't have an answer to that. And that's the worst part is like not being able to actually give somebody a definitive date but May 20th has been the closest thing to like a definitive reopening date that the state of Connecticut has allowed us. So hopefully that will be the date. I hope. <laughs> do you think that as soon as Connecticut allows tattoo shops to reopen, do you think you guys are going to go right back into the shop or are you going to be a little tentative about going back? Maybe I'm definitely going to go right back in because I mean, it's been like two months for me because I, I quarantined myself before the state like shut everybody down because I had come back from Atlanta for the Atlanta convention. And, you know, I was in airports and things like that. And so I was just a little nervous about that. And then I started to feel like a tickle in my throat. And I was like, I'm staying home. I'm not going out. And then like two days later, I was like, it was just literally like allergies or like a regular cold but I still gave myself like extra time to like, just in case. And so I've been like quarantined even longer than everybody else at my shop and it sucks. So I'm definitely going to like jump right back in. Um, 
with all, there's so much information and misinformation out there. Like we don't really know how deadly this is, or like, there's a lot of like people saying that they, that family members and stuff were like, you know, they were told that they had it, but they were never tested for it and things like that. And so like, I don't know I feel like there's just so much misinformation and, you know, it's all like heard through the grapevine kind of stuff. So, I mean, as long as I'm wearing my mask and like clients wearing their mask, we as tattooers, like this is our daily lives. Like when this all started happening, I'm like, who's not hand sanitizing after they use a gas pump? Like that's my normal life. And like, so I guess, you know, for most people, they, they just don't understand cross contamination. They just don't understand, you know, bloodborne pathogens and things like that. And just, you know, how easy it is for somebody to get sick from germs. So for us, I think we have that added bonus of like, this is what we do every day. So we know, you know, I I don't touch my phone after I've touched something that I think is dirty. You know what I mean? Like I don't touch my phone with gloves on. That's disgusting. (laughs) So you know, everybody, I, I can't stand when I see people at the grocery store and they have their mask on, they have gloves and they're just touching everything with the same gloves and then touching their phone and then taking a phone call and they're putting their fucking gloved hand with their phone to their face. And I'm like, do you not understand anything? Because obviously you don't, because you just touched everything in the store with the same pair of, like, just take the gloves off. It's you're doing nothing, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we have the added advantage. So I think I think tattoo shops in general should be fine. Like we already clean. We already sanitize everything after every single person, everything I use is single use. So like there should be no cross contamination whatsoever. So as long as we're both wearing masks, I'm a hundred percent going back to work. (laughs) Okay. That's cool. That's that's your, uh, your choice for sure. Yeah. So I know some people are going to be different. Some people are going to be afraid of it and they're going to be very hesitant to go back to work and things like that. But at this point, financially, I can't sit at home anymore. Like, you know, bills, bills haven't stopped. So I, I got to go back to work. I wish you the, the best of health in that, you know, I yeah. mean, it, unfortunately, you know, in, in my opinion, as clean as, as tattoo shops are, with this as an airborne virus, it's, you're not, you know, you can't scrub the air, unfortunately. Yeah. It's at least one of those things where at least it's a cleaner environment than a grocery store. You know what I mean? We at least sanitize way more. And so for all these people that go to the grocery store every week and are doing all of that, like, I feel like you have more of a risk catching it at, you know, your local grocery store than you would in a one-on-one, nobody else in the shop kind of environment, everybody wearing masks, everybody gloved up. I feel like it'll at least be a little bit safer than people's normal day-to-day. So back to what you had said about rescheduling conventions. Now, you, usually you, you're, a big, you're a big convention person. You do a lot of conventions. I mean, this has really been a, a this has really cramped your style kind of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't think I can remember the last time that I've been home this long in years. Um, I, I don't know what to do with myself, really. I'm literally never home this much ever because I'm working full time and traveling full time, basically. So it's usually like every weekend I'm away. And so to have this much time, like sitting at home, not doing anything is like the first couple of weeks, I really... I was like, I don't think I can do this. Like, I I don't know that I'm physically going to be able to just sit here. So, you know, I've gotten used to it now, but I don't want to do it anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I'm used to traveling and like my, like we, like we said, my house is clean, but my house is always clean because nobody's ever home. (laughs) So (laughs) it's literally like when friends come over, they're like, you live like this. This looks like a museum. And I'm like, yeah, I'm never fucking home. So. It just stays this way. I just have a lady that comes and dusts for me every once in a while. And this is how my house looks. <laughs> well, I guess you, your dog must appreciate you being home this much, though. Yeah, very much. Although I feel like after like, I think it was like week three that he was like, he didn't want to like, normally like if I'm home, he like sits on my lap. He wants to be wherever I am. He's got to follow me everywhere. And like week, week three, he was like, like not in the room with me he was like over in his like dog bed like looking outside and stuff like that and I'm like are you sick of me already like and he's like I need me time. Thing. yeah he's like I need some me time right now <laughs> so I see that you recently started uh, an OnlyFans uh page 
You want to, can you explain kind of to people what that is? I don't, I don't even know what it is really. <laughs> uh, OnlyFans is just a way for people, they pay monthly and they can connect with certain people that they aren't normally able to talk to or communicate with. Um, it's just photos and videos and stuff that like people don't want to post on other forms of social media. So it's like lingerie stuff and things like that. And people can request certain photos and videos. It's just an extra source of income for me right now because I have nothing else going on. So I figured I'm going to be taking a bunch of pictures of myself and my husband anyway. Let me just post them and see if I can make some money off of them because anything helps. <laughs> and my t-shirt sales are plummeting. <laughs> I, I saw you got some some negative feedback to that on your uh on Yeah, your I really only yeah, I really only got like two people that were like being jerks about it. One of them like called me an online prostitute. And I was just like, don't be like this person. <laughs> like that's just like ignorant. That's an ignorant thing to say in any in any asset aspect of anything. Um but then another person was like agreeing with them, but just basically trying to get attention. And then like, I don't know, they were just, I was just like, okay, well, unfollow me. Like, you know, have a nice life, you know, goodbye. And they just kept trying to like get more and more attention. There, def It was definitely like one of those kids that, you know, the kid on the playground that doesn't know how to talk to girls. So they like pull their hair and then like girls don't like them. And then they're like, oh, well, you know, fuck girls then, you know, they're so stupid. Yeah. That was one of those. So, but that was, I, that was only the only like negative feedback that I got. Everybody else was like, do you girl have fun? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do me and I'm going to have fun. So, you know, so subscribe. <laughs> if you guys want to check that out, I'll post a link. So listen, thanks Holly. Thanks for doing this interview. And I'm, I'm glad you guys are all, uh, you and the family are all healthy and, and well at the moment. Thank and, uh, you. you know, Good luck getting back into into work and into the tattoo uh, convention circuit. If if any conventions are still scheduled by the time this is all over, exactly. <laughs> kind of yeah. falling one after the other. They're canceling. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it's yeah, it'll be a slow year. Yeah. But anyway, thanks for all. Thanks for doing all of this, and uh, and thanks a lot. Take care now. Thank you.